We need a party of two to fill this ride. Who's our lucky couple? Yeah, we got a party of two right here. Welcome everybody to the Party of Two podcast. We're back. Sorry, I had a <laughs> cough. It was bad. Let's, let's. I'm gonna introduce myself first. Uh, welcome to the show. I'm one of your hosts, the Internet's Mark B. Donica, and I am also the Internet's Andrea Donica. Are you picking that up? Yeah, maybe. Maybe I will. He's starting to move in with me here at the here in the Internet. <laughs> maybe our ones and zero household. Yeah. Well, we'll see how it goes. We buy money with Bitcoin, oh. or we buy house with houses with Bitcoin yeah. and and all pure digital stuff. I want a real house. I want a real house too. Uh, sorry for <laughs> the absence last week. I'm still working through uh, a bit of a cough. Last week it was so bad I could barely say anything without coughing. I've got some cough uh, drops here and I may have to take a break to cough every now and again. Ricola. They're beautiful. They don't sponsor so they'll probably sue us for that. Oh. So uh, No, this is free <laughs> advertising for them. That's what, that's what they all say. But... <laughs> La- which sucks because last week i thought we had a really we, we had a really, really good did. idea but uh instead we're moving forward much like the the parks have done with the halloween season and just kind of thrown it away we're gonna throw away that halloween segment until we need it uh for for a future time yeah but uh today there's just there's some some news and some stuff that that we have some differing opinions about that we want to we want to talk about so we're going to we're going to do that if there's anything that you want to hear us talk about it, please make sure to hit us up on twitter at party of two pod that is twitter.com slash party of two pod and i don't remember our email address but we have that too and if you want to be one of our ride operators please contact us on twitter if you have a mic set up we would love to have you beckon us into whatever ride that you that you so well choose i suppose and do multiple takes do well, something well, funny do something creepy well, we, well, do something silly we'll have them contact us first okay okay well, we'll you know props. what i just want them to have fun fun is fun yeah we like fun you know who doesn't like fun that i didn't know what company i was gonna go with yeah i i was really waiting for the answer to that one but i wasn't sure where you were going i don't know you know i hear you know who doesn't like fun Adventureland in Disneyland because we're not yeah. getting a gosh darn Jingle Cruise this year, which is such a fun version of the ride. And rarely do rides get Christmas overlays, but that one was pretty dang good. Yeah, I'm really disappointed. This is year two now where Jingle Cruise has not returned, and still Disney has been pretty much mums the word on any information as to why or anything else. And if some hardcore Disneyland Trader Sam's fans will remember from last year, there was the special Jingle Cruise Tiki Mug limited edition with the mama and baby elephant. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. It was really cute. Mama was wearing a Santa hat and they're like twirled around with Christmas lights. And it was a big to do, much like the recent Hatbox Ghost release. Uh, that everyone lined up for. People did trash the Jingle Cruise mug a little bit, but people were even more surprised that Jingle Cruise didn't come back to Disneyland that year, but they still had the mug release. And now, it, go ahead, oh, granted, Walt Disney World uh, is having Jingle Cruise over there, and I'm wondering if what Disney is overall doing is saying, okay, well, we're never going to have the Nightmare Before Christmas overlay in Walt Disney World. So Walt Disney World can have its own thing and Disneyland can have its other. But it really stinks that we had it for a few years and then they just took it away. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> making it exclusive, making you try to travel to one park versus the other. And similarly to how various conventions have toy exclusives they're they're presenting the idea of ride exclusives and when it comes to like the universal parks or anything like that there's there's not well i suppose there are some exclusives too but this, this i think this is a little much yeah and and going with the logic of the haunted mansion versus the jungle cruise yes the jungle cruise is sort of a time honored tradition but it all so everything every little thing helps because there are times when it's super busy but jungle cruise isn't 
There yeah. are times, and and at the same time, there are also there are also moments where Jungle Cruise is very busy. But well, especially cr- when they did have Jingle Cruise, I mean, it would be two to three hours long of a line sometimes. But I mean, like also during the summer, yeah, when it fills up its entire top queue. Oh yeah, absolutely. maybe with the con- and bit of a transition, maybe with the construction of Tropical Hideaway. They didn't want anybody up above mm. while they were con- at least for this year. That do- it doesn't explain last year, right? But for this year, it it is entirely possible that the plans for Tropical Hideaway now, once that restaurant opens, having that top level of line open could be advertisement for the restaurant. So people can instead of just walking up and just seeing sort of a flat angle of it, they can get above it. They can see the whole seating area. They can see. Our recently announced new animatronic addition to to the uh, the area. Rosita. We're finally getting Rosita. We're finally figuring out what happened to her. But I think that's a possibility. I yeah. think once that opens up, anything to get people to see that from all angles and get them in. I, I would be hard pressed to not see Jingle Cruise next year. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. I do remember last year. When people were trying to figure out why Jingle Cruise didn't come back that year, there was speculation and rumors that Disney was trying to revamp our Jingle Cruise altogether yeah. with brand new props and, and just completely reworking it. But I haven't heard anything more about that. Really, it's been really quiet. But I do think that that would make a lot of sense. Right now, they're trying to make Tropical Hideaway be something really special, and they don't want to ruin guest experience with really loud construction and really obvious things going on or people peer over. I mean, fans already try to do everything with Galaxy's Edge and everything else, and there's so much that Disney can only do, but that space would be perfect viewing opportunity to see what's going on in tropical hideaway it would probably feel much more exciting if everything is kind of revamped with the land for the holidays and be a fun sort of tiki christmas so yeah they'll make that whole area themed there could also be safety concerns you know if kids are up there they Mm -hmm. could yeah it it, it could be a little bit too dangerous hmm. but um yeah with, with with rosita we don't know too much about what she's going to be doing just that she's going to be there well actually from disney parks blog they did say that she's actually trying to go with a more solo career and to be wary because she's got a set of one-liners that would make the Jungle Cruise skippers quite proud. So are you thinking that there's going to be a live cast member behind Rosita and we're getting sort of like an old Club 33, Barker Bird sort of thing? I'm wondering if that's what it's going to be. I'm also thinking they're calling it Tropical Serenade, right? You search me. You know that more than I do. Oh, um, Anyhow, I'm thinking that she's going to be serenading us a mm-hmm. little bit. And it'll probably feel a little like a a lounge, a nightclub lounge. So she will be our, our chanteuse and be a little bit, um, you know, fun. Vaudeville oh. sort of feel is what I'm thinking they might be going for. Okay. But with a tiki twist. I'm a good fan of a tiki twist every now and again. Yeah. I'm I'm excited to see her there. Oh, me too. Regardless, there. Would you say, even though that there was never like a Rosita bird in the Tiki Room, would you say that, that there's a similar mystique to it than with the Hatbox Coast? That was the first thing I was going to say. Absolutely. Hey. Nailed it. <laughs> and the one thing too is with Rosita, the attraction actually references her. Mm-hmm. So there's more of a wait. Well, what did happen to Rosita? And then it just keeps. Was there ever up one? What, and, does it keep you up at uh, night? I I mean, there have been times where I'm like, where did Rosita go? 
where there's no space for her. I've thought thoroughly about this, actually. Oh? Yeah. There's Go not on. a little perch for her in Tiki Room. And I have stared hard at that bird mobile mm. and i'm like where would she go where would she be what what is she doing where is she why did they add that line ah anyhow i'm i'm thrilled that we're finally getting an answer to some of these questions that have been plaguing me hard pressed questions very very serious very dramatic questions in this time of world tumult <laughs> the one question that we need answered is whatever happened to rosita and here we are. Yeah. Um, so we, we got a chance to visit the parks recently, the Disney parks recently. Actually, both. We In between last time and this time, I think we've been to both parks. Yeah, we have. And uh, something that I brought up with my episode with Ty that ended up happening that I r- sincerely hope continues to happen is the Stranger Things maze specifically in both, or, well, as far as I know, just Los, in Los Angeles, I don't know about Orlando, but they offered lights on during the day tours of the Stranger Things sets because of the popularity of that show. And not everybody, especially with how quickly Horror Nights sells out, bless you, with, with how, how quickly Horror Nights sells out, there's no guarantee that you get a chance to see it. And with a brand, as, especially right now with a brand as big as Stranger Things, they wanted to give as many opportunities as possible and... Today, the day that this comes out, was Stranger Things Day. It was the day that Will disappeared, and I'll go no further. <laughs> but they reopened their Stranger Things offerings for just one more day. One, uh, no, I was I was going for one short day, mm. but that's not not hilarious. in the Emerald City. No, not that one. Okay, but they had their waffle dessert. They had all of the Stranger Things offerings that they had during Horror Nights, but. It was just a couple days later. So even Especially in Los Angeles where they extended Horror Nights through the second, through the end of the week. And it's only been a, it, o- it had only been a couple of days. And they were just like, eh, yeah, we just won't. We just, we'll just leave it up for an extra couple of days. Get, bring some last minute Halloween business in. And I, I hope that they have more popular franchises that, or hopefully the success, uh, there, there was enough response to going in with the lights on we were going to go but again sickness and and things of that nature oh yeah he couldn't go anywhere (laughs) it was pretty bad home anyway it's coming back but i I hope that next year there's more of that me too with i i I kind of also think that for the walking dead attraction there that there they have some you know what we're going to turn the lights on for for a little bit i know that that's the point of the attraction but there's gonna (laughs) It's it's funny to say after Sunday's episode, but there's there's going to be some renewed interest in Walking Dead, and I say it exactly like that on purpose. Mm-hmm. So, I I wonder if that will bring people to the attraction. If the if, well, the nature of the Walking Dead is it's creepy. They're zombies. Deal yeah. with it, as opposed to Stranger Things, where it's a little bit different of a story and it's just the demigorgon that's true so that's true yeah but i I was excited to to see that i hope it comes back and it was such a hard transition more so for disney than for actually i don't know because a part of the universal tram always has the grinch set yeah it's kind of hard to be i think universal has has christmas unlock a little more than disney but disney always before halloween is over is when snow starts to show up the masks show up in in new orleans square and obviously nightmare before christmas takes over the haunted mansion so for for all the parks that we visit do you feel like christmas comes a bit too early my problem is I love christmas I mean, and i too. get so excited when i see the decorations that Truthfully, it doesn't bother me so much. It used to. But in the grand scheme of things and thinking about tourists coming to visit Mm -hmm. in this in-between phase and they're trying to avoid the absolute insanity probably of December crowding, I see why Disney starts to just quietly put things out. And for this year, Christmas starts... November 9th 
Yeah. Which is pretty fast out of the gate. You really can't celebrate Thanksgiving so much just because with all of the awkward history around it. And I guess we could go into a cultural quagmire of speaking with the complications of every single holiday that's celebrated. But yeah. you don't want to put a bunch of turkeys around little things because, oh, we're going to eat them all. <laughs> It's well, kind I mean, of a morbid holiday when you think about it in certain aspects. One of my favorite things about going to the parks during the holidays was to see the pardoned turkeys. I, I do miss the pardoned turkeys. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what I I would have loved that. You know, yeah. that it was it was that whole area was cool. And I mean, now we're getting a, a much bigger, different right. type of area. I, I mean, the, the trade off is worthwhile. Turkeys for Star Wars. I'm for it. <laughs> I, I do hope, do do presidents still pardon turkeys? I don't know, to be honest. I, I don't know if Trump pardoned a turkey last year. Huh. I, uh, another really dramatic question to <laughs> <laughs> ponder. But anyway, it, it, I, mean, I, the... I don't mind it jumping over to Christmas so fast. Mm. What I always find is a little disappointing is that during Halloween... Haunted Mansion is in Nightmare Before Christmas mode when it is the perfect Halloween attraction. Yeah. But it is when two holidays collide. So I understand why they decided to open it up earlier, but it it is a struggle. You can't deny that perfect blend of theming. Yeah. Really. Speaking of of a great blend of theming, I didn't talk about this before we went live, but we did sort of to each other. A very interesting park has recently come up in the public eye. Oh, yes. A park in Utah called Evermore has, as recent as September 2018, revealed itself unto the world. A a doctor found a mysterious portal to to this timeless era. That celebrates different themes depending on the holiday. And during Halloween, they had this medieval RPG. There were uh, humanoid metal men. There were goblins. There were elves. There were creatures of darkness. All sorts of things. And it looks so cool. It's it's more... It's more of, they, they describe it as an interactive theater experience. Where, similarly to the upcoming Galaxy's Edge... Once you step through the gates, everybody is a part of that world, whether they're bird handlers or tavern keepers or or whatever. It just it looks like a a plussed up Ren Fair. Yes, it looks like an absolute dream. Mark and I want to go so much. So right now we're we're planning on going for for a certain time. They they've said that their Christmas offering is going to be more a Victorian thing. So seemingly less fantasy so that like it was one thing to be like there's quests and stuff like that but when it came to oh there's a victorian you where you can walk around in a victorian era and it's christmas like that's sort of the idealized pre-santa claus right. sort of stuff and uh I, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, a christmas carol as a story oh, yeah. so being able to walk around and and maybe there's just a young boy walking around with a giant raw goose uh, for whatever reason <laughs> <laughs> trying not trying to hawk it for whatever reason maybe they it, it, so, there is some sort of fantastical element but either way these are these are working actors day to day and look it up ever more on uh, I'll, I'll look at the the twitter specifically but there was a video on facebook that that a company recently shared that made it look so cool and i hope that it it's it's one of those things that that you don't like saying but when it comes to something as niche as that you gotta get a dedicated fan base really early or else you're you're gonna close they are gonna be offering season passes in the future they're There are plans and it works for it. A day ticket isn't too bad. It was pretty reasonable, but you have to get out to Utah, and I think that's going to be the one thing. It's an hour from Salt Lake City, 
So that's a bit of a drive, even if you fly in from, we, we looked it up, it was the middle of the night, but with <laughs> no traffic, it's about a 10 to 12 hour drive. Yeah. So it's on Twitter at Evermore Park. It's in Pleasant Grove, Utah, and it it looks... It's like a dream. Cool. It's yeah. it's yeah, cool. Cool, a dream, all all sorts of stuff. And if they have any sort of a preview for Christmas, I'm excited to see it. I wonder what their non seasonal offering is. Yeah, I'm wondering about that too. Very much so. Like what is it gonna look like in January? What's the what's going to be the thing? And they send people on these specific quests and different things everybody meets up we i turned off the video pretty quickly because i didn't want to have too much spoiled for me the video luckily said turn off here if you don't want spoilers yeah and i i want to come in as blind as possible that's my favorite thing with a lot of theatrical experiences truthfully yeah so even if we if they don't change much for next year's halloween offering which was called lore then we won't be spoiled. We can go back and and enjoy it. But 10-hour, 12-hour drive, not that bad for a super unique experience and something where nightly could change. Like the similar stuff from night to night and a similar run, but depending on who you're with, it it could change everything. And they had daytime tickets versus nighttime tickets. So at least for the Halloween portion, it looked like they were two different offerings and experiences and intentions. Yeah. And if anybody from Evermore is listening, hey, we would love to come through. Yeah, Ultimately, absolutely. In theme park influencers. How about that? Let's, <laughs> let's make that a thing, especially when it comes to indie parks. I really want to go. Yeah, me I really too. Go. I really want to go too. It's our first uh, meetup with with all of. Nope, that's not true. Our first meetup was with uh, Belinda at uh, <laughs> Cafe Orleans. Yeah. Hi, Belinda. Hi, Belinda. It was great to see you again. Yeah. It, it had been too long, and hopefully, it won't be too long before we see you again. I got an idea for an episode that I want to do with Belinda, which uh, I'll, I'll run by you, and I'm sure you're you'll be very interested in it too. I'm sure I will. Yeah. So our main discussion topic that. I wanted to bring up is there is a rumor it hasn't been confirmed but it's it's pretty strong scuttlebutt it's a pretty big butt pretty big scuttlebutt that Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway which is opening up next year at Disney Hollywood Studios in Florida is going to be coming to California now where to me it makes sense to go in a particular place but they so far it sounds like it's going to be going into the hills of Toontown, which I think makes perfect sense. And go, please feel free and elaborate why you think that makes sense. And I'm not going to get like a gotcha. I just want to <laughs> I want to hear your stuff before I go into it. Yeah, and and I am curious to hear your reasons and thoughts as well. I think it makes perfect sense because Mickey and Minnie's houses are in Toontown. That is their place to go and meet the characters. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a perfect extension. Toontown has been a little rundown for a while. Hasn't really gotten a whole lot of TLC and love Mm -hmm. in a long time. And I think this would be a nice revitalization for the land. I think it would be a really strong reason for all age demographics to come out to that corner and edge of the park. I like that the only thing that sounds like would be taking down would be the gag factory as where the queue would begin. So none of the characters' houses or any of the other Clarabelle's things would leave. ice cream. So all of that would remain and everything would just be behind the hills mm-hmm. for the rest of the show building. I think it makes perfect sense. I think it's in a great location. And I think that it will also move crowding around and disperse it a little bit more around the entirety of the park. Mm-hmm. So why why do you not like the fact that it might be coming to Toontown? Because I think it would do much better for the Hollywood Studios area of Disney's California Adventure. Right now, at the end of that street, we have a big blue psych. And the Hyperion, like, while there was the rumor of it getting its big fabulous overhaul on the outside, 
why not utilize that space because Los Angeles and, and downtown Hollywood is like this anyway. We've got Tower of Terror is a big building. Theater is a big building. There are a bunch of theaters in, in downtown Los Angeles even in, in Hollywood. Even going to Hollywood proper, you've got the El Cap, the Kodak, and a little further down, the Pantages, and it's all in, in one big thing. You've got that unused giant studio or that unused soundstage, which I think they use only for food and wine if they still do. For special events, they'll use it every now and again. Similarly to the Wonders of Life Pavilion <laughs> down in Walt Disney World, where it's just, eh, this is a nice space where we don't have to make anything else work. But when it comes to spacing in Disneyland, there's so much, so much space, so much little space, so little space, I got there, <laughs> that they're using for, like, facilities and things like that. And by taking more, the amount of backstage space that Galaxy's Edge took... To the point where now all of their animal stuff is off-site. To the point a lot of their, their stuff that they used to do on property is now off-property. And makes it a little bit harder for employees to, to work. And I'm saying that purely as conjecture, not as mm-hmm. anybody where an employee has told me, Hey, you have an outlet. Tell my story. <laughs> but making the skyline appropriate and also the fact that it's already in... Hollywood Studios in Florida, and you're once Galaxy's Edge hits, Disneyland won't necessarily quote need another E ticket or a D ticket for a while. California Adventure arguably still has trouble being an all day park. Yeah, it does. And the only thing that keeps it makes it an all day park is waiting for cars or waiting for uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, and once. Marvel opens, maybe it'll be, we'll be getting closer and closer and closer, but I think it would do a lot for that park if you made it, if you gave it to both ends. If if you said, oh, all of our new Marvel fans and all of our new properties, we're going to give you a, a section of the park, but also for you classic fans, we're going to have this. At the, at the very least, replace Monsters, Inc. with this at the very, very least. Because it's a similar, from what we know, it could be a similar experience. It's still riding on a car through an animated world at the very base. And the right. ride the, ride's, the ride system itself is going to be very different from Monsters, Inc. But not to say that I don't think it fits in Toontown as well. But when I saw, oh, it's going into Toontown, I was like, oh, okay. But I do agree with you. It's a great reason to get people to that end of the park. If it, if you get off the 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 ride and it says, "By the way, Mickey and Minnie are home, and you can visit them right now," and that puts a line in there that adds money to Photo Pass, blah blah blah, et cetera, et cetera. Regardless, we need magic bands in California. We do. But what were you going to say? <laughs> so it it surprises me that you talk about the Hollywood section of California Adventure because for me, I, I'm i still not super enthused about the fact that Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Rail is taking over the great movie ride. Mm-hmm. For me, making it fit in Hollywood, the only reason that that would work is if they built... Grauman's, mm. the same sort of facade at the front. Past that, I don't think it belongs in a Hollywood section. Mm. I mean, yes, Mickey is Hollywood. He is the reason why Walt was able to build his empire. Mm. I get that, of course. But if we're if we're trying to stay within what is Hollywood, if we're still trying to maintain any sense of that area of California Adventure being a Hollywood area, Mm -hmm. I think it needs to stay more Hollywood. And it really does seem at this point that Disney has thrown that essentially out of the window. I I keep waiting for them to just rename the park altogether because it doesn't feel like they're sticking with the California theme anymore so much, even though they spent so much money 
doing the revitalization for the park and building Buena Vista Street. I think it would almost make sense for Mickey and Minnie to be more around Carthay Circle Theater area mm-hmm. than it would be to be in the Hollywood area. Well, one of the things about the ride is we know that it starts out by watching a Mickey cartoon, a Mickey and Minnie cartoon, and then you are brought into that world through the movie screen. So that theming mm-hmm. is why why I, I feel like the Hollywood stuff makes sense. Putting it in an old theater because Grauman's is uh, copywritten, but putting it <laughs> putting it in the in the Chinese theater as they're doing in Florida, though I'm sure they're they're gonna. Well, actually, no. All of the the outdoor stuff is already done. They're just working on inside. Exactly. Well, and a fun fact about that facade as well. Disney actually went to the original architects for Grauman's to have the plans for how they built the original thing so that they could actually make it as identical to the real one in Hollywood as possible. So Mm. they, they really took the time to make that feel like classic Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Really, really special piece of Disney history so i in, think so instead of copying that what is another what if what if there was another iconic southern california theater los angeles hollywood wherever a, an iconic theater or a theater where well we we have the carthay theater but mm-hmm. if if you have something similar that gets put at the end of the walk and gives that another eye catch as opposed to a essentially a, a replacement for the big blue wall to... Oh, I want a replacement for the big blue wall. Yeah, I, even I'm though that's sad the that they theater. didn't. I'm sad that they didn't go ahead and do that revamp for the theater. I feel that the theater does need some extra love. Yeah, and I'm hoping that eventually that will happen. So that that's ultimately why I think Hollywood. Once the Marvel Land opens, the Spider Man meet and greet and the Captain America meet and greet, those are going to be gone. And I think that area will be primed for some sort of an upgrade or let's move this soundstage or let's take this down and put up another. It, even if it's, you know, it would be it would be great in that place then if they're not if they're not going with Hollywood, a great Muppet caper ride or something like that. Oh, yeah. Some sort of a Muppet attraction in Hollywood that would fit there, I would say, more so than Mickey and Minnie. But, I keep wondering what Disney's going to do with the Muppets because it's gone so quiet. They well, are really not utilized so much, and they keep losing more and more of their space within the parks, too. Well, are they still doing that show that we missed in Liberty Square? They are. So they're doing that. There was that rumored Beaker and Professor Bunsen Honeydew mobile mobile Muppet Labs where it was a mobile animatronic with the two of them. Well, they had it going. And then that's it. And then it. it's gone. But uh, there needs to be Muppet representation yeah, in the park. There does, 100%. Especially with how much the Henson Company is doing right now. They need to keep the Muppets as a limelight in the world of puppetry. Or Muppetry. <laughs> So so yeah, I I while I'm not entirely it we're getting another we're getting a new ride right. in California. Woo-hoo! So it's not it's not bad <laughs> news. That's another thing. There needs to be some sort of a ducktail something. But uh, oh, yeah. that's beside the point. Ooh, or is it? Remember that tweet that you posted the other day with that Donald Oh, with the sweater? Mhm. You like you made a character <laughs> to be Ebenezer Scrooge. And you don't put him on a something that says Bah Humbug. Yeah. That's one of the silliest decisions. The, and especially with how popular DuckTales is. Or I, I would like to imagine how popular DuckTales is. How big of a cast you have. There should be some sort of a in-parks merchandise. I would love an in-parks representation, of course. Oh, we yeah. got the Disney afternoon thing. Did you ever listen to that parade that I sent you? Not yet. No. Oh, it's so bad. The <laughs> I, I went back. I found this website of somebody that's document. It's DisneyChris dot com. They have audio logs of almost every attraction, parade, firework of Disneyland proper since all the way back in nineteen fifty five. It's an amazing history. But they have a cavalcade 
from the Disney afternoon, that's just the epitome of bad 90s, like, <laughs> we're going to rap because it's the cool thing. Oh, no. And then they play, like, a lame version of the theme songs for, like, Tailspin and uh, uh, Chippendales mm. Rescue Rangers and stuff like that. But I remember early, early on the Disney afternoon representation that the parks had and how now, or at least the past couple of years, there's been this renaissance almost of these really popular kid shows like gravity falls like star versus the forces of mm-hmm. evil and ducktales that where where is it where yeah is everything else? they they <laughs> should 100 percent bring it in i think part of the problem is they don't want to go as cheap as they did when we were kids mm-hmm. with disney afternoon because for motorboat cruise and autopia they put up these cheap plywood uh, but we remember them. We remember them. And I remember the and this is specifically like the Gummy Glen yeah. stuff on the motorboat cruise. Like it was supposed to be so exciting, and then it's like oh, oh they're not no. actually here. It's just a bunch of pictures. Yeah. But the um, the one thing I will say is they did have how long ago was it? A couple months ago, I think in the spring, it was a Disney animation afternoon at california adventure where they had panels with the casts of the various shows and they did a live read of a ducktail script and almost the entire cast was there which is huge especially yeah. for david Tennant, but also for the boys and 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 webby but it was essentially the mcquack manor except for Mc- launchpad duck mcduck why did i say mcquack because of launchpad because i had launchpad in my head there you go but uh launchpad wasn't there the voice of launchpad wasn't there but it was it's a really it was a really cool event but it, it's it's one geared day. more towards adults for that and i'm wondering if the show is what the demographics are really reading as for who's watching yeah. but clearly it got renewed for two more seasons, two more seasons right yeah. season three so just it's announced be doing great they announced season three at the launch of season two so i think ducktales is a long term or a longer term cartoon for them they have bigger plans for that and the cast seems to be enjoying themselves oh yeah especially the way that they present recording together looks like a gas yeah all of the special stuff that they do i hope uh i i hope that Six seasons in a movie. Let's <laughs> let's get another DuckTales movie, even oh, if yeah. it is Treasure of the Lost Lamp. Oh, Again, I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that at all. Just figure out a new way to do it. Who would be the genie? Who would be the modern take? Who would be a bomb, a huge bombastic sort of uh, sort of voice? Oh my gosh! Because David Tennant taking over. Um, is all, all of the new voices are amazing, right? But a, a modern bombasticity for that character. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I I think Disney would first try to go to a popular comedian, mm-hmm. but I can't really think off the top of my head who would be the right fit. Well, who would be the biggest name or anything else? Well, Rip Taylor. If he's still with us, might as well. <laughs> uh, because he was amazing. But then there was also Murloc, the 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 villain that was Christopher Lloyd. And they're both still with us right now. They're they're getting up there. Getting Alan up there. Young did Scrooge until <laughs> he was ninety two when he when he did his last performance of Scrooge. Uh, in the the DuckTales game, which is... You can get it on Xbox Live Arcade, and I think you can get it on Steam. Highly recommend, because it's a love letter to the original. Essentially, any character that... Every character did re- reprise their role, unless they had passed away. So, Glomgold sounds shockingly young, because <laughs> he's, he's done by a younger actor. But everybody else is... It's the same. It's so... It's so great, and it was a great thing to have before the revamp. And now I'm wondering, for the new Kingdom Hearts game that's coming out, if one, Alan Young recorded his dialogue in time, and two, if he didn't, is David Tennant going to be Scrooge for Kingdom Hearts 3? Maybe. (laughs) Scrooge had a great part in one of the PSP games. We're getting off track. Yeah. But yeah, we want more (laughs) animation representation we talked about a gravity falls thing in well a and episode. now i'm thinking about 
DuckTales maybe being a good fit for the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail. I want I want the money bin. Oh, of course, of course. Maybe maybe that's like the the final final thing mm-hmm. after going through all of these tasks. There's like a special area like here's the secret money bin. Or it's like a it's a forced perspective where you see the money bin off in the distance or something oh, yeah. like that. But yeah, let us know what Disney animation you want to see represented in the parks. Let us know what you think about all the stuff we talked about today. Mickey's Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway as well as Halloween offerings and Rosita and uh, Jingle Cruise. And just Christmas. And yeah, Christmas is coming up. We're going to we're going to start gearing our stuff a little bit, but we do have some Thanksgiving to get through. Yes. And lots of turkey, yeah. lots of gravy. We're going to figure it out. Mashed potatoes. Well, I mean in terms of talking stuffing. about stuff for this podcast specifically. Stuffing okay. our podcast. There you go. <laughs> Nailing it. But uh, it, we got we better get on this ride before this person gets any more energized because they, we, they we've made them wait long enough. Uh, but before we go, Andrew, he's hungry now. Where can the you just changed your Twitter account? So <laughs> I did. I can be found at Dole Whip Drea on nice. Twitter and on Instagram. I do love my Dole Whips. They are my thing. <laughs> You can find me on Twitter. Oh, you can find the show on Twitter at Party of Two Pod. Uh, if you want to be one of our ride operators, please let us know through there or through our personal channels. Uh, find me at Mark Bidonica. If you're listening to us on iTunes, please leave us a review. Please. We really appreciate it. It helps us become more findable. If you're on uh, YouTube, subscribe because we're we're getting some camera equipment we're going to be getting some fun stuff and hopefully starting around christmas time we'll be able to put some of our our video adventures up as well we have big plans big plans and so make sure to subscribe there uh we're also if you didn't know we're on soundcloud we're on uh google play we're i'm gonna i'm gonna work on getting us on spotify i don't know exactly what that Hmm. takes but I'm going to work on getting us on Spotify because I don't know how many Parks shows are on Spotify. Yeah. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank watching. you. Goodness. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's, I'm in a weird place. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to Party of Two Pod. We will see you on the next ride.